Hey guys, it's Emmy Cat, obviously, and today I'm going to be reading from another story I found. It's called The One. Um, it's 25 pages long. I skimmed through it yesterday uh, just to see how many pages I had, see if I needed to do like one video or two. I'm pretty sure I can get this in one video. Might be a little long, but I don't want to space it out too much because there's not many pages. Um, and then I have another one. Look through, it's a little bit longer. Uh, that one probably won't be a whole, or just one video, I mean. And, uh, yeah, let's just see. Um, oh, here at the bottom, you can see. I don't know if you can see. Written by Emily Schroeder. That's my name. I don't care who knows my name. I think I wrote this. Oops. Okay. You know how composition notebooks come with a little schedule thing in the front? I decided to fill it out, apparently. Write book, write book, write book, write book, write book. Anytime. Anytime, 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 anytime. I guess I wanted to write the book. Maybe. Maybe just a little bit. Okay, but let's get right into it. Prologue, August 15th, 1998. Stephanie Jackson stood in front of the counter, slicing a tomato to put in her slicing a tomato to put in the salad she was preparing. She was humming. She nearly dropped the knife when someone put their hands over her eyes. She gasped. Woo, the man said. Mrs. Jackson moved the hands off her eyes and turned around. She smiled. The man smiled back. Robert, you scared the living hell out of me, Jack Mrs. Jackson said as Robert, her husband, kissed her forehead. Well, I would hope it was her husband and someone didn't just come in and fucking be like, Boo! Sorry, he said as he looked at his wife's stomach. And sorry to you, too. Mrs. Jackson was pregnant. Nine months, to be exact. He kissed her stomach. I split stomach right the first time, but the second time I added an E. I kind of wish I'd scared the baby out of you, Mr. Jackson said. Gee, some. Um, that's gross. That's weird. I don't like that. You were due any day now, he smiled. What's for lunch? He looked at the counter. It was 11.33 a.m. So you look at the counter and it tells you what time it is? I should have said clock or stove clock or something. I don't know. Mrs. Jackson rolled her eyes. Oh, Robert, always thinking about food. She turned back to the counter, put the knife in the sink, and put the slices of tomato into the bowl of salad. I smelled tomato wrong, too. I added an E to the end of that. Tomato. We're having salad today. She picked up the bowl. Can't wait, Mr. Jackson said. I can just keep... I could... Could just be going he, her, instead of Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. Because I've already established who they are. Uh, I'll get us some bowls and forks. He went to the cupboard. He was about to get a bowl when he heard glass shatter. He turned around and saw that his wife had dropped the bowl of salad. What happened? He asked. Mrs. Jackson had to steady herself on the counter. Um, Rob, it's time, he, she said. She almost fainted, but her husband caught her. He knew she meant the baby was coming. What else would she be talking about? I, I really don't know much about, like pregnancy and stuff or like when a baby's about to be born so I don't and I didn't then either apparently because I don't think people faint when they're they go into labor uh oh wait here while I get the keys Mr. Jackson said he got the car keys off the coffee table he went back to the kitchen put his wife's arm around his shoulder and they sole shoulder and they walked to the car. When he got to the car, he opened the door for his wife and helped her into the car. I've seen car a lot. Um, then he closed her door, ran to the driver's side, got in, and started the ignition. Ignition. <laughs> After they buckled their seatbelts, Mr. Jackson backed out of the driveway and headed towards the hospital. I don't think I spelled that right. H-O-S-P-I-T-L-E. I'm pretty sure it's H-O-S-P-I-T-A-L. Uh, Mrs. Jackson looked as white as a ghost. I guess I kind of I, I guess I kind of did scare the baby out of you, Mr. Jackson said, trying to make a joke. His wife gave him a look that would have made a grown man run and hide. But he is a grown man. 
Uh, Mr. Jackson didn't talk for the rest of the ride. That though he noticed his wife, though he noticed his wife was looking paler by the minute. Min, I spelled minute wrong. Minuet, M-I-N-U-E-T. And there's a bunch of dots, which I guess would just be to like show that time had gone by. Mr. and Mrs. Jackson rushed into the hospital. I spelled it wrong again. They went to the front desk. My wife's in labor. She's about to have her baby. Well, duh. If she's in labor, she's about to have a baby. What? My wife's in labor. She's about to eat a donut. Like, come on. You didn't need to say that. Mr. Jackson said frantically. The woman at the desk ran and got a wheelchair. She wheeled it up behind Mrs. Jackson, who collapsed into it. Then a nurse who was nearby rushed Mr. Mrs. Jackson into the paternity ward. Um, I don't think that's how that works. I don't know. I really don't know anything about babies. Um, uh, Mr. Jackson followed. The nurse asked another nurse to go get a doctor. The nurse came back, and a doctor followed. The whole time, Mr. Jackson was holding his wife's hand. They reached a the room. You have to wait out here while I see if there are any problems, the doctor said. He went into the room and shut the door. Mr. Jackson sat down on a chair near the door. Twenty minutes had gone by before the doctor came back out. There's a complication. Your wife needs a C-section. After 20 minutes, I'm pretty sure it would take a little bit longer than that to figure out a woman needs a C-section unless, well, unless the baby's like dying or the heartbeat can't be found or something. I don't know. Um, there's only one problem. Two, rather. If we do the C-section, your wife might not survive, but if we don't, the baby will die. Okay, I guess that's why she needed a C-section. Mr. Jackson just... I stared at the doctor. I, he didn't know what to say. Save the baby, Mrs. Jackson said We Oh, save the baby, Mrs. Jackson said weakly. The doctor had left the door open. I don't care if I die, just save my baby. She looked at her husband and mouth. I'm sorry. As the doctor rushed back into the room, he and the two nurses moved Mrs. Jackson to a gurney and wheeled her out of the room. Then the rushed. They. The. No, it was the. Then the rush her to an operating room. Mr. Jackson wanted to follow, but one of the nurses told him to go wait in the waiting room in front. He reluctantly left the paternity ward and went back, went to the waiting room. He sat down in the chair that was closest to the door. Then he just started crying. I'm pretty sure they allow husbands into the C into where the woman's having a C-section. I don't know. Five hours later. I spelled later wrong. What the fuck? L-A-T-O-R. Mr. Jackson was pacing when the nurse came back and told Mr. Jackson to come back. When he went back, he saw the doctor. The doctor pulled the surgical mask down around his neck. I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson, but your wife, Stephanie, didn't survive. I'm assuming he knows her, his own wife's name. He didn't have to say that. Uh, we tried to revive her, but as soon as we got the baby out, she died. I did not know anything about babies. I still don't, but anyway. Mr. Jackson, who was sitting down in the chair in front of it, the doctor, put his hand in, put his head in his hands and started sobbing again. Then he looked up at the doctor. What about my baby? He said as he stood up. The baby is fine. It's a girl, the doctor said as the nurse came in with Mr. Jackson's baby. She, the baby, not the nurse, was wrapped in a light pink blanket. I would hope the nurse wouldn't be wrapped in a wet, light pink blanket. Like, Jesus Christ. Um, the nurse handed the baby to Mr. Jackson. The baby looked at him and grabbed his nose with her hands. How high up was he holding the baby? Because you hold the baby kind of like, whoop, I forgot the book, like this. So how long would the arms have to be to reach his nose? Unless he was like, oh, I guess he could have been holding it like this. Um, I'm assuming this will have to be a two-part video because I'm either a slow reader or this is super long. Okay. The ba- oh. He looked down and smiled. He was crying, but not because he was sad, because he was happy. He looked into his daughter's eyes, which were a vivid green. He instantly knew what he wanted to name- wanted her name to be. Olive. Olive Marie Jackson, Mr. Jackson said. Olive Cood. Uh, yeah, that actually is a pretty name. Uh, the doctor smiled. Again, I am so sorry about your wife. I can just imagine being like, I'm so sorry about your wife. Just smiling like that. She made a hard decision. Before we gave her the anesthesia, she asked me to tell you if she loves you. 
The doctor turned around and got a piece of paper. From who? I guess the nurse. Um, he told Mr. Jackson it was a birth certificate and he needed to fill it out. He asked the nurse if he could hand, if she would hold Olive. She said yes, and Mr. Jackson filled out the certificate. Oh, then Mr. Jackson filled out the certificate. It looked like a comma there. <laughs> he gave it to the doctor, then picked up Olive again. The doctor said he could take Olive home today and that he'll get the birth certificate back after the they photocopy it. Oh, and she was she has the oddest birthmark on the right side of her neck. I've never seen one like it before, the doctor said. Mr. Jackson looked into his looked at his daughter's neck and saw what looked to be three long claw marks on her neck. He could tell that it was a birthmark and not a real scratch. Huh, he said. Then he thanked the doctor and nurses. Come on, let's get you home, Olive, Mr. Jackson said as he headed toward the lobby. I don't think you could take a baby home that soon after the wife gives birth, especially not if she died during childbirth. Um, and then there's like the, I guess this is kind of like a change in scenes. There's this little squiggly line I put there. Somewhere under Ohio, in the city where Mr. and Mi Mr. Jackson and Olive live. Somewhere under Ohio. I don't know if that means, like, underground or, like, a state under Ohio that I had no idea what it was called. I don't know. The head vampire opened his eyes, which were blood red, and smiled an awful smile. She has been born, he said. He and the other vampires had been, well, let's just say sleeping for 50 years then the head vampire laughed maniacally laugh okay i think that means it's supposed to be laughed the other vampire is laughing as well um that's the end of the prologue uh this is already 12 minutes so i'm probably gonna end it here i thought i was gonna make it one video but i'm not a very fast reader apparently let's see Yeah, that's going to have to be at least two more videos. Um, but, yeah. So far, it's okay for being written. I'm assuming I wrote this when I was 16. I think I wrote these stories around the same time as the first one I read. Um, but, yeah. My channel for the next week or so is just going to be a lot of me reading from these books because I have nothing else to make videos about. It doesn't really matter. It's, as I've said before, no one really watches my videos except my boyfriend. Um, I mean, if I send the videos to people, sometimes they'll watch it. But it does, it's not the same as people just subscribing to my channel and watching my videos, you know? Uh, but I'm gonna keep doing it because I like what I do and it kind of fills in time. Fills in time. Yep. And, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. And as you can see, I changed scenery. Um, not much. I kind of just moved ten feet to the left or to the right from where I was before. I figured for reading stories or if I'm gonna read from my old diaries and journals again I would sit on a couch and kind of just be like laid back and like yo I don't know what this is should probably stop the video now peace